Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a 25-year-old from Papillion, Nebraska, USA. A staple and legend in Omaha with the Lancers and with the Lincoln Stars. He then headed to the best school in the world and became a legend with the Western Michigan Broncos. He once scored four goals in a game like yours truly. And in his last season, ended up with 26 goals, the most in the NCAA. Was named an All-American, a first-team All-Star, ran amok, folks. He just finished up his rookie pro season and promptly has let the hockey world know what's up. As he put up 30 goals, the most by a rookie in the AHL, obviously was then named to the All-Rookie Team, and at the All-Star Game, for fun, became the fastest skater in AHL history. But most importantly, just became a Calder Cup champion with the Hershey Bears in Game 7 overtime and has probably been having a time since. Welcome back to the shed, Ethan Frank. <laughs> Glad to be back. That was a long list right there. Hey, I was thinking about it. I got it how we know each other. I, I put, I've put together 200 episodes since last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not <laughs> a lot, a lot, lot of time anymore. in the shed. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess how we know each other is uh, we met because someone tweeted when you scored four goals that it was um, the first time since I had done it in 06. And that's a long time. But then uh, obviously I had, you were kind enough to come to the shed. And then, you know, I feel like I got a new buddy and I start watching your career and I watch it all play out. And uh Man, there's a lot of similarities to the start of my career, other than you ran amok and uh, dominated the HL and I went down to the coast. But <laughs> yeah. other than that, it was similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, gosh. But no, like, the, you're what, one-way AHL deal out of school? Free agent? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 50 years senior. Yeah. Things weren't, uh, things weren't looking great for me, but hard work you know it's uh it's make your own luck kind of thing you know and uh I think it's I was really proud of you because I know I was after my college career I thought I would have got more and then um when I got sent down to the coast I was a bit deflated and my play suffered for a while because of it and to see a guy go in there and show all the draft picks the big contracts what's up and then you lead the team in goals as a rookie one way I I dig that shit. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely had a lot to a lot to do to prove myself, and um, I think I put myself on notice out there this year. It was, it was fun for sure. Well, um, the one way you really got on notice though was uh, <laughs> that fastest skater, Jeepers, man! Yeah. You were yeah, flying that blew up a lot more. Yeah, that blew up a lot more than I thought it was going to. And it was it was really quick. So I was always curious. I'm like, I knew I was fast, so I kind of wanted to know how what, fast. <laughs> my fast was compared yeah like and like david and, and those guys it's uh you beat mcdavid's time trying very hard and, yeah yeah i mean see yeah i'm sure it's different um during a game obviously but i don't know yeah it's pretty cool to be to be thrown in there like that um well i thought it was really neat and then i was like holy moly that's a shed guy doing that and i see it that's all right. over the place like pretty well went viral you could say right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely yeah, probably blew up my Twitter a lot more than I wanted to, but it was cool kind of seeing how much love I was getting. Well, uh, so I have a curious question. Did you practice the turns and, and like a lap a few times before that? Because the way you took the corners, um, like the first quarter, I watched it today. The first quarter, you're all crossovers, you get moving. And then the second one, you didn't really do crossovers. You kind of planted and did like a little outside shimmy shake edge there, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I actually did practice. The whole day was a joke. So we had just played, um, I'm pretty sure it was the night before, and I had like a 6 a.m. flight um, to Montreal. So we get there, and um, it took us like an hour and a half to figure out who was picking us up at the airport. It was a whole joke, just getting checked in and getting everything going. It just took forever, and then, I think I had like 25 minutes in the hotel room before we had to go do like the red carpet walk and red carpet. Thing, you know, walk, eh? Holy yeah, it was kind of cool. It was a little blown out of proportion, but the fans in, in Laval that like you made it seem like you're actual all-stars, which 
was pretty that's, cool to see. But um, it's fun to feel important. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You feel pretty cool walking through there, and everybody's asking for autographs and everything. But I got them. And I had maybe like an hour to get dressed to get on the ice and skill started. So you didn't really get even like a warm up. Did you know you? Like when did you find minutes. out you were doing the fastest skater? Uh, I believe it was the day of, like, honestly, like checking into the hotel. Um, it was pretty, pretty close to the event that we all found out what events we were actually doing. Right. And you didn't, um, like, so yeah. yeah, it kind of gives you some anxiety. You're like, oh shit, I'm not ready for that right now. Wow. Yeah. Fast to skaters. Uh, I, so I, it brought back a memory for me because this year my son went in a fastest skater and, uh, oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, watching you do it brought back the memory of him doing it and he can wheel too. And it was pretty neat to see, but uh, pretty cool to yeah. see a um, free agent, right shot scoring winger do well in his first year pro, because um, I went, I thought I had a great preseason and went down to the coast and had a hard time getting out of there. And um, I'm curious how it all went for you this year. So like, did you go to the NHL training camp? Yeah, yeah, everybody did on uh, Hershey. And then um, there's, I think there's a few guys from South Carolina that were there as well. How long did you last at the main camp then? Uh, I was one of the first cuts. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I was the big, I was the big group of guys all asking each other what they were doing when they got to Hershey. Yeah, yeah, I was, it was like 48 hours into it, right? I got to watch one preseason game. Yeah. I didn't, and then that yeah. was that. <laughs> yeah, it didn't last very long. I think it was after the first preseason game. Well, guess what? Next year, you're going to have to stay longer. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm really hoping to make it past that first round, but we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty sure. So other way we know each other, I got to bring this up, though, is I called it. I called you siding with the, the big club. Um, after your fastest skater, the research team got hot, and I checked out how you were doing your rookie year, and I saw how many goals you'd scored, and you are an all-star. And I'm thinking, when he just showed everybody how fast he can skate, and he has that many goals – they're going to sign him to an NHL deal. And do you remember I posted it on my stories and I said, give it two weeks. And I took a picture of your elite prospects team where everybody was Washington capital, except for like a handful. And I'm like, give it mm -hmm. two weeks. And then about a month later, you signed with the capitals. Didn't you? Yeah, no, it was funny. Cause when you tweeted that I had actually like already signed, they were just waiting until the free agency <laughs> deadline was over. People and are going to so start like, worrying that people might that. think I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good source. <laughs> uh, small world hockey world, right? Is so you leave and then this Brian McAllister comes to Western Michigan, right? And rips it up. Yeah, um, it so it's so, talking of the small hockey world is I'm putting all this shit together in my shed PJ Fenton was my line mate in Germany and he's a scout for Florida. He sent me pictures of the loss and lunatics videos. He sent in pictures of me in the lobby with the team photo and he's doing it multiple times throughout last season. And then sure to shit the end of the season, Ryan McAllister signs with the Florida Panthers, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's yeah, my yeah. line mate watching them all year. It's just a small world. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. It, uh, it's so small, but I feel like it's so big, too. There's so many people you don't know or don't have a connection to. And then if you feel like you have a connection to everybody somehow. Yeah, it's once you get into pro for a decade, buddy, you're going to realize. But yeah. you're at the point now where your eyes open out of Western Michigan where you're like, look at all these Europeans. I didn't know about all you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not kidding. <laughs> I remember I like, I'd never played with Europeans really until I got out of, out of Western Michigan. I get to Syracuse. There were Finnish guys. There were Czech guys. There was all these different kinds of dudes that could really play hockey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not kidding. That's one universal way. It's that some countries really know how to put together. Yeah. <laughs> um. So anyways, that was cool when you signed. So what do you got? One more year left? So uh, yeah. Is... Signed with Washington for one year. So you did the one year AHL deal and now you got a two way for next season. Yep. So you had a long playoff. So are you healthy? You're ready to get training for next year? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was just, I just called my trainers today and asked like when I could get started up in the gym. And uh, I think I'm going to go home and see, see some family um, quick for a few days and then get in the gym right away and on the ice back to it. Well, that's good. You're healthy because after playoff runs, 
I yeah, remember my first year pro man with the Daytona beach bombers in the coast. We went to the finals and I think I played, if you add it all up with exhibition, I played 102 games that year and I was ruined. I, my body oh, was man. ruined and I couldn't have thought of getting right back in the gym for a couple few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Especially playing that game seven on June 21st. It's so weird. Like the most I've ever played is like 55 games. I think and I ended up playing, I think it was 81 or something like that this year. And, yeah, no, I hit a wall and it was just beat. And then I don't know what happened. Found some new life and some new energy. And... You got your you got your second win there in the yeah, finals. I yeah. saw that 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 was another moment of yours that kind of went viral. That you went top titties with that shot in the finals, eh? Yeah, that's about yeah, as far cool, down man. as they go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really even see it going. Just heard everybody cheering for it because the guys were in the range, the shot block, and yeah, just celebrated like as hard as I could probably. Well, that was playing in the finals of any league, man. I've done it and uh, scoring goals and like the moments of those series, they're big time, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially because, you know, how's are going to come and play? Wow. And especially, you, know, you never know if you're going to play there again. Yeah. And um, I guess you were right there for the bit, a huge moment in Hershey Bears history, right? The picture of when the dude scores game seven overtime, you're right there. Yeah, yeah, I was I was ready to bang home the rebound, but he was first to it. Uh, he beat me. He was excited. And, yeah, was and who was that that scored the game seven winner? Uh, Mike Vecchioni. Well, he's going to remember that one, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's going to sleep anytime soon either. What uh, was the score going into overtime? Was it 0-0? Zero, zero? No, 2-2. Two 2-2. Two. Two two. So how did the they game play out that it got to overtime? They went up 2 nothing on us in the first. Really? We tied it up in the second. And then the third, you could tell that they started to get a little nervous and grip their sticks a little too tight. We just started pouring it on. And there was like seven minutes left. And there's a few guys on the bench, like, turn and look at each other, like, dude, there's no way we're not going to win this game. Like, we can't not score right now. And we had a few chances towards the end of the third, and um, overtime was tight, but I felt like we had a lot of the momentum. And so, yeah, we were just buzzing and uh, capitalized on our one chance we needed. So, well, I was curious. That's one of my cutting-edge questions, was what the vibe was like in the locker room between the third period and – overtime of like game seven man you can win it in overtime but game seven like winning is the opposite of losing and like those other yeah. guys are having a whole different summer now <laughs> oh yeah for sure especially because you could just tell like their first season in the league uh making a lot of noise uh brand new rink and uh yeah you could tell obviously it would suck to lose in a game seven overtime and um yeah you got to feel like put up a hell of a series and they were a really good team but so you, the vibe was confident going in. You guys were just like any other period. We're just going into the next one. We're going to win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After game one and two, um, we had already planned on like going back out to California. We knew it was going to happen. Our family or coaching, like the management staff was saying, like, tell your families they're flying back with us to California for game six and seven. Um, we're going to pay for the hotel and everything. And so, yeah, like we had planned on it from the start and we just never stopped believing. We just knew it and pretty much convinced ourselves that we were going to do it. Well, you guys did do her. And um, to me, it seemed like you guys probably played a similar style to Dayton back in the day, but like a just a team gritty game, not many goals. And it looked like your goaltender was hot, hot in the playoffs. And it looks like he's a winner at every level. Hunter Shepard. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable goalie. He played at Duluth, and we always hated playing against him. And so it's good to be on this side of, of Shep now. Well, and it's always interesting when you see guys break out of college and where they go and what opportunities they get, right? When the research team got hot on who your starting goaltender was for a Calder Cup run, like that guy starts out in the coast for like two years, and he just he won mm -hmm. everything you could win in college. And it's like then you see other people get given stuff – and you're like, well, this guy's won everywhere he went. What was he supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Just because, like, and he just did it like again, a... folks. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He sure did. He's nothing but a winner. Nothing but a winner. Yeah. That. Yeah. He'll probably. That's. I always tell people, and people that haven't won don't get it. 
wedding opens doors. It changes everything. It changes guys' careers. It changes the doors that open for you. It changes your brotherhood for life. It's it's so different winning than losing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're, you couldn't be more spot on to that. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess other way we know each other, though, is Western Michigan, right? That's how we got chatting. How... Yeah. Um, but I, after I chatted with you there, then, um, I did see you guys go on a heck of a run. Um, I saw the one, it was like one of the elimination games in the tournament that like, I never would have got to play in and someone scored an overtime. And I thought it was so cool that the guy comes into the locker room after whoever he talked to. And then, uh, you guys were all hiding and he didn't know where anybody was. That was a sweet video. Yeah, <laughs> and you yeah, can I tell how close you guys were when I saw that. Yeah. Oh yeah. We all knew like just one guy said, come over here and grab a bottle and everybody took off like their helmets and gloves and like grabbed the bottles completely ready to spray. And it was a cool moment. And then you guys all came running in the room. So, um, yeah. What did you guys get to? It was like the game before the frozen four. Yeah. It was the regional final. So if we would have won that next game, we would have went to the frozen four. Yeah. Well, that's, as a Bronco, that our team's underachieved all four years I was there. It's really cool to see you guys doing shit like that now. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I always sure, knew yeah. what Western Michigan could be. I, I could, you, they have everything you need to be a powerhouse, right? Mm -hmm. The loss oh, of yeah, lunatics absolutely. or something. <laughs> yeah, and then they just got a proof for that new rink and everything downtown. So hopefully the lunatics What's this stick now? around. Yeah, you didn't hear about that? They no. Got a new, I'm not sure if it's happening anytime soon. But yeah, they're building a new, like, athletic facility downtown. And I know at least hockey's going to play there. I don't know if other, like, it, sports will use it. Really? So that would change yeah. everything. The loss and lunatics yeah. are what make that a real Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure not a lot of people are going to want to drive downtown from the campus. And and not even the players. You want The players want to be on campus, too. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a lot quicker to go home and go to the bar than downtown. And yeah, and then all the students are there watching you play. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how that'll work out. Hopefully they figure out accommodations for maybe they should talk the to the lunatic. hockey guys about what they should do before they make these decisions, right? <laughs> That's a great idea. Granted, <laughs> they could they could def I do like the old school look, but like a few renovations probably wouldn't hurt the rink and maybe bring in some more uh, more fans. But, What's interesting is you were the one that got to have the renovations. I was promised renovations yeah, when I was going true. to the school and they never did them until I was already out of the school four years later. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I was, well, when I was being recruited, I was promised a new rink by my freshman year. And so it's going to be, I was be at the, I'm Duke the generation where I was promised to do a rink basically every team I went to and every team would get it right after I left. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So it always goes, you can't ever get that good. Luck. You know what though? I don't need that fancy stuff. I, I like, nope. I like the loss of ice arena. I think that it should stay right where it is. And I like the old rinks. I don't like the new ones. There's no, yeah. there's no culture. There's no character. There's mm -hmm. the Western Michigan's arena is, high end yeah and you can't be changing that because the students are not gonna they're not gonna travel to those games yeah there's no way there's no way no no i know i asked you this last time but i can't remember your answer what was your favorite establishment at western michigan with Ooh, I don't to know. go out to on I... fun nights I'd probably have to say the library. The library. And I think I we do. Figured well, that I guess, as I say, I guess my freshman year, I should say of all time, would be the old two story grotto. See, uh, yeah. I think I've heard of that one talking around in my but shed. Yeah. But they, yeah. They redid, is it, redid is the, the library the old firehouse that, like, the firehouse lit on fire and then they rebuilt it and called it the library because the firehouse I, lit, lit on fire? I was gonna say I believe it's I believe so, but I'm not too sure. The firehouse is where we show. ran a muck when we were there. Yeah, yeah, they let us do what we wanted. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was college hockey at its finest. Yeah. And so was the tap room. Yeah. Wish you guys could have seen that stuff. It was wild. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, okay. So let's see here. And I did have, I think your agent, is it Matt Federico? Yep. Yeah, so he came to Another the shed Western too. Yeah. Boy, did we 
boy, did I blow that one when he came to the shed. <laughs> we, I cranked back a few beers with him. We did our whole thing. And then um, my computer was full of storage and it like, it got lost and I lost the whole episode and then we just, oh. yeah, sent out. That's like, tough. yeah, it was tough. It was, it was tough. You know, I'm going to have to have him back for a chat again here, but yeah, for sure. Anywho, I can't wait to see you play in the NHL next season. Um, that's a shed guarantee folks. If anybody's listening <laughs> to me, <laughs> um, but another teammate of yours from Western Michigan that literally went right from Western to like sign in with, I guess Colorado's that Poland and I, you know, you scored a bunch of goals. So did I, that guy put up 30. He put he beat up us. back-to-back hat tricks. Back-to-back hat tricks. Yeah. And the G in the GLI he scored the first night. They only play two games. You play one game and you're in the championship scored a Hattie the first night in the championship game back to back. They won eight, one and nine, one. I think those games. Jeepers. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of guys don't get six yeah. goals in their college career. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And he did it in two nights. It was, it was kind of cool to see because he led, he led the nation and had tricks too. I think he had five or six, which is pretty much all his goals. Yeah. Well, he didn't get but four in a game like us, right buddy? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. We got him there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So the night before game seven, cause I, I did lose in Germany. It's it was a best of five, but we lost game five in overtime. Um, and losing is the opposite of winning. It's totally different experience, totally different thing. Uh, but like then I went to game seven in Denmark and we did win the championship in game seven. So like how could you sleep the night before? Like, how was your sleep through playoffs? Uh I don't honestly it was pretty much normal like we never really panicked we just we stuck to our like after we lost game six um for them to even the series like we were happy we got to go out to the steakhouse the night before again like one last supper for the boys like so you guys had a tight team with each other yeah oh yeah absolutely we never never lost faith or belief we just knew we were doing it and we just stuck with what we did because we knew it was going to work but when you just say you guys wanted to go out for lunch or dinner together the night before, like that's when hockey teams win is when you guys are like brothers and want to be together. The teams yeah. that I lost with were the teams that guys were doing stuff together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or don't want to hang out with anybody. either. they're there like just yeah. for themselves and the paycheck or whatever. But yeah, yeah no, everybody was so tight knit. Like even honestly, we probably had like 10 to 12 scratches and they were just as tight with the group as anybody was so it was really cool to experience like a tight knit group like that and then pro hockey when there's 10 to 12 scratches usually there's some sour taste in people's mouths right and then all of a sudden yeah oh yeah the culture's off you need those guys to buy into yeah right? for sure and like they're as funny as it is they were happy like going to california on vacation like they're just watching the boys win and do whatever like they had really good spirits about it so it helped a lot so this place you were playing against is called Coachella. That's in California. Yeah. I don't even mm-hmm. that, what it, that's like. A, that sounds like a fancy place, right? Yeah, it is pretty nice. It's kind of like a older populated kind of go there to retire a little bit. Um, but yeah, really nice in Palm Springs. They have a lot of cool restaurants, nice little shopping areas and a ton of golf courses. And they had, a, they had a squad this year too then. So they were pretty good. I saw... So what I figured was they had the top five scores in the playoffs and lost, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how deep our roster was. It wasn't one line or any. Well, that's when you guys are a team, it. right? It's and a guy's going to step up every every night. You don't know who it's going to be, right? Mm-hmm. But somebody will do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was never, never expecting. Like for me, for example, being a leading scorer, they were never expecting me to score. They always loved when I did, but. There, you know, one guy is not going to win championships, obviously. So, yeah, it's really cool to see that. Uh, that's awesome. So, how did it work out at camp? Because you were a one way HL deal. My guess is they didn't pencil you in on the top two lines. How long did it take you to get there? And how did, like, how did you work your way up? You just played good off the hop and you got earned it right away, or yeah, yeah. One of the first line guys had gotten hurt. Um, and they needed a right winger 
and moved the guy that was on right wing to left wing. And, um, yeah, you no, got your chance. How we early was that? Again? And, uh, maybe about 20 games or so. And then you got your yeah, opportunity was, and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. It was still fairly early into the year and yeah, no, it, we just clicked really well. And, um, I had, a, I had a few games where I was just flying and so it was making their lives easy because I'm just, just throw the puck down the ice and I'll get there. Like I promise I'm feeling good. I had no idea you were that fast and you're like a half wall guy. Yeah. Yeah. I like to just get going. I like to push the pace for sure. Um, that's neat because I saw you shoot that one top cheese too. And you got a snapper on you too. So you're that fast and you got a snapper. So here's a cutting edge question because most guys are pretty smart when it comes to their own game. What do you need to improve to become a full-time NHL or guy? What area of your game? My, I'm on the fence between wall work and moving without the puck. Moving without the puck defensively or yeah. offensively? All over the ice. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I've gotten a lot better defensively than a couple of years ago, but obviously there's well. Um are you frozen? Um yeah, no, I know what you mean about the defensive play though. Um you guys has we we get in all the coaching stuff, but when I left Western Michigan, I wasn't ready for pro hockey because I didn't know how to play D zone correctly. Um, we weren't teaching it nearly the same at Western Michigan back then. Um, I had never even heard a stick on puck until I got to the East coast. Um, so that's pretty wild to think of that. I had never even heard of that term in my hockey career and I'm going to professional hockey because um, yeah. that's a pretty important one. And then I got a coach in the East coast coast that taught us, like he taught, we were not the best team in the coast, but we made the finals. And it's because a guy taught us how to play defensive hockey, he taught us where to be. And all of a sudden it really wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it was, <laughs> you know? No, no. Defense is really just hard work. Yeah. This and knowing really where to be. Is. And then like, one of the guys things was always be on your inside edges. And he's like, as soon as you're turning in the D zone and you're on your outside edge, you're not in position. And I was, mm -hmm. I was like, huh, never thought of any of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you put two and two together. You're like, Holy shit. It worked. Uh, yeah. And I'll, you just had to tell me that. No, it's, but yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you got all the tools you need and then um, you keep working at it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm still, still really hungry and really excited to continue to get better. So it's fun. Oh, good stuff. I like it. Um, so who did you get? How did the playoff run go? So you won the finals in game seven. What was like, is it, it's four rounds at best of seven. You played 20 playoff games. Uh, no, 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 no. So the first two rounds for us, we got a buy in the play in round and that's a best of three. And then like the actual first round is best of five. So you only need three and the second round is also best of five. And then the conference final and final are best of seven. Oh, okay. So that's different than when I was in the HL. But yeah. Yeah, it is a little different. I heard that the league wasn't too happy with how playoffs go. And so they're going to think about reorganizing it, I guess. Yeah. Back when I was doing it, it was just like the show. It was best of sevens, you know. Yeah, all the way through. Yeah. I feel like that's how it should be if like these guys get called up and it's the best developmental league. You want to be ready for that. Yeah. So here's more cutting edge questions and what I thought was similar. Just our careers were similar until now. <laughs> um, yours is going to be different than mine. And that's, what's neat about having you on. Um, but you were a free agent scoring winger that put up a lot of numbers. And then you did leave after your senior year to go to Hershey. I left to go to Syracuse. So what was that like leaving after your senior year? <laughs> Uh, it was honestly a lot of fun. I feel like I, I feel like I had my fun the first couple of years, and so as it kind of started to get more serious and talks about pro hockey, I uh, think I was ready to move on. I was glad for my time at Western and and felt like I grew a lot, but I felt like I was ready to move on to the next level. But 
Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Everybody's super supportive and, and thankful that they got to spend time with me and same me for them. Um, so did uh, so you were there for five games. Then do you go back to Western? Are you done school? Is it over? Do you have to go back? Yeah, now? yeah, I did. I did go to Western. I ended up finishing um, just like the first four years. I started my master's. Um, I'm not sure if I'll go back to that anytime soon. You can but, always finish it. Yeah, yeah, that's always going to be there for me if I wanted to. So yeah, you can always I. I did mine when I was 32. So yeah. Yeah. There's always time after hockey to finish school for sure. Yeah. 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 You can focus on what you're doing now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's, I'd much rather do that. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah. No, I would agree with you. Do that. <laughs> um, another guy from Western Michigan that's doing well, which this is so neat for guys like me that I did well. And then there were teams that had never seen me play where, you guys are all, there's guys getting contracts out of Western Michigan left to right. That goalie that you played with, he had a season a with Providence Brandon. Oh, Boosie. Yeah. yeah. He did unreal 22, five and four. That's a, record. And they had, they had some, they had some pretty good goalies in their system right now. So for him to be able to, to get time like and, yeah. and prove himself. Yeah. Yeah. He did really well. Um, well, good for you, Broncos. You guys are just making us old fat buggers proud, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so who were you playing with? Like, who was your line this year? Who'd you uh, gel with? Most of the year, it was Mike Scarbosa and Mike Becky Tony. The guy that scored the OT winner. Mm -hmm. Wasn't what one of your top scorers, too, got hurt for the playoffs? Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was Mike Scarbo, so they got hurt. Yeah, the guy that you usually played with. So you're yeah. a you play right wing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Half wall. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I better keep. Okay, so summer training. What do you do for working out these days? Like you got to actually where and what are you doing now? Because when we were gonna talk. You were moving. So were you just leaving Hershey and yeah. now you're yeah. where? Yeah, just leaving Hershey and now I'm at uh, my girlfriend's place just outside of Ann Arbor. Um thinking so of going she's home a so for... she's a Bronco too? Yep. Yeah, we actually lived four doors away from each other at school. So that's pretty much how we met. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my wife lived in the same dorms as me. Nice. <laughs> nice, easy enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the Burnhams, there, uh, they were called. Did you live in the Burnhams? I did. I was the we, last class to live in the Burnhams. Right. Yeah, the last one. Hey. So, yeah. There's there was, there was a lot. There was a lot of intersport breeding in those buildings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was. <laughs> yeah, there was. All different sports there, folks. All athletes, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mixed genders. It's all there for everybody to share. <laughs> and um so say I, I we lived on the third floor right and then just down the hall there was the all the different teams there was volleyball soccer gymnastics and then you put in there you know the hockey guys the soccer guys <laughs> it's just football guys football guys with something else right yeah, oh yeah, especially the the young fired up freshman, you know, you think you're top of the world and your sports the best and you're the better <laughs> athlete, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. And <laughs> then everybody's competitive that way too. Some yeah. sports oh, don't yeah. even get along Absolutely. with each other. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Us and us and football almost got into a huge brawl in the dorms and it yeah, it wasn't good. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Some guy tried to move my moped out front. I started talking all smack. And, uh, yeah, they came down on our floor shirtless, hooting and hollering, and ready to beat the shit out of all of us. Oh, well, and it, you know, every year's different. All It's the people, right, and how they gel. We had football guys that would come over and play beer darts with us. And um, yeah. I couldn't believe it because, you know, I'm from Elmira, Ontario, and we'd had beers. There were 300-pound, big, huge fellas that literally had two, three beers and they were puking in garbage cans. It's mm -hmm. wild. Yeah, absolutely. We could always, that's what I was so happy about is the hockey guys could always out drink the football guys. Wasn't even close. No, <laughs> never is, even, never will be. No, no, they can't hang, folks. Just oh, so you know, <laughs> they're really big, but they can't hang. 
<laughs> so off the ice, off the ice, do you have the most memorable night in Bron- your Bronco career? Because I know what mine was. I'll start. We swept Ohio State my senior year, and then it was at my apartment. We hosted it, and we had like an epic Halloween party. Epic. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, if I had to guess, so I think it was my sophomore year. Denver was one in the nation, and we went out on a Wednesday. And we were really nervous going into the weekend because we weren't like we we're still a little hungover, not feeling great, and end up sweeping them. And so we go absolutely nuts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff was broken. And yeah, cars were getting stuff thrown at. And I ended up in the back of a cop car at the end of the night. <laughs> From doing what? Uh, I really don't know. I honestly just remember running down the street and then falling. And then he was just sitting right there. And he's like, what are you doing? I, and I, he didn't, didn't do anything bad. I was just trying to run home and fell. And he actually gave me a ride home. He was really cool about it. So I got Oh, lucky. that's good. Because yeah, it, it is interesting how if you talk to them nicely and they, they treat you nicely yeah. and it all works uh, out yeah I, I i remember walking out of a house party and this was back when i wasn't 21 and um if you got in trouble man you, like it was a big deal at school if you got in trouble yeah and oh, yeah. uh i wasn't 21 and i was used to being able to drink in canada because i was 19 and mm-hmm. i go walking outside with a beer and then there's cops at this party to say like there's a noise complaint and i'm standing there and they're like well give me your id and i'm like Oh dear. <laughs> Cause you gotta be 21. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know yeah, what? Uh, Talked my way out of that one. <laughs> yeah, sure did. Sure yeah. did. It's, it's, it's easy to do. Honestly, as long, like you said, as long as you're nice and cooperative, they'll probably be nice back. But Western Michigan is like, I, now that they're doing better in hockey and the recruits they're bringing in, like I saw with this NHL draft, like three kids that haven't even got to Western Michigan yet are already drafted, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think first, uh, first is going to take that program to a whole new level, a whole new level. And he seems yeah. like quite a guy. He seems like a shed guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, uh, probably one of the best coaches I've ever had. He's business when it's business time, but he's really fun and exciting to be around when like it's time for that. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, when it's go time, it's go time. But the other, the yeah, other times, sure. it's, you should be having fun and enjoying the sport, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Because these I, memories will last forever. I find it interesting because it's so different, like how coaching has changed. Like, I've seen guys that play at Western Michigan saying, right, like, literally tweet, I'm so thankful this guy's my coach. And I'm thinking, if there was no Twitter, there was no social media back when we were playing, but none of us would have been tweeting with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, it was, it was a different culture than what I'm seeing yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Everything's, uh, everything's changed. Even like when I was like 16, we were getting fucking shit thrown at us and like you're getting called a lazy motherfucker and your career's going nowhere. Sell your shit. And they're just tearing your life down. And now it's and now buddy, people, buddy when you get to the rink and, and you can enjoy the game and have fun. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, did you know that your assistant coach Nick Bootland was in Kalamazoo like since I played there? I didn't know he was there that long, but I know that he was he played in Kalamazoo and he coached and he was just a legend with the K Wings. Yeah, so I the research team just got hot because I saw who your coaches were, and that guy it was his first year out of Kalamazoo, and I'm like I feel like I know that name and I've heard it, and that his first year in Kalamazoo was my my senior year at Western when he's running amok with the K-Wings and I'm doing the Broncos. And um, he was there on a, the same pro hockey team from 06 to 2022. Nobody stays with the team that long. Must be a yeah, great that's dude. Unbelievable. <laughs> that's unheard of. Yeah, you know, he is great. He's, re- he's really fun to be around too. And kind of, he's pretty much like first like business time. It's all serious, but he's just an awesome guy to be around. Yeah, you guys. so you guys had some good coaches eh, this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. So did you find it interesting this season in the AHL? I don't know how the culture was with your team. When I got to Syracuse, 
you could tell it wasn't like college. Like at, in college, everybody was competing to be in the lineup, but like when it came to be getting called up to the NHL, like there were there were guys that just weren't that good at teammates <laughs> when I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. That's really what I expected coming in was little clicks. You're gonna have that guy that's making a lot of money. That's too good for me, and blah blah mm-hmm. blah. But not really. It was like from training camp. Like coach just set the standard. And that's family. how you win. Uh, yeah, no, literally it is. This the culture he was able to set um, with the amount of guys that they brought in, guys that were on the team that didn't know what things are going to be like. It was it was crazy. That's uh, that's heartwarming to hear because I had a different. Um, I've always had a different opinion of North American hockey, and my one year in the AHL really turned me off of it. And that's why I always liked Europe so much was because you were always on a team for a year and. I always knew I'd be on that team. Um, but to hear a guy could pull that off in the AHL, um, that's impressive, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it it helps, too, because our captain had played with him or played for him and won the Calder Cup already with him in Grand Rapids. And so it helped that he was able to just push that standard through everybody and make it work. It's a culture. So who's that captain? Who's your captain? Dylan McElrath. Dylan McElrath. I feel like I know that name. Hmm. You might. I, I might. Was he a – yeah, he's a Red Wing. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know him, though. Um. Okay. So, do I have any other questions for you? Do you have any questions for me while I look at this? Probably not. Yeah, no. If anything, I would have wanted, wanted to hear your best bar night story. <laughs> <laughs> best bar night? Well, the Halloween party was the best house party. Yeah, that yeah. We had. I guess that I guess that probably makes the same difference, right? Well, you know what I wish that you guys. I I feel like you guys didn't do it because I heard it stopped at some point. Was the senior trips, like it, so? I'm gonna have on all the guys that were freshmen when I was a senior, and we're gonna talk about it. And I remember the one when I was a freshman, the senior trips where the seniors planned a weekend getaway for the team, like not a weekend, at least a full Saturday, a full day Saturday, um, gone somewhere as a team, sleep over, and then come back. Um, I think we did the Friday and Saturday sometimes, but like the seniors booked everything and decided what to do, and it was whatever you wanted. And, man, those were my favorite memories of becoming a team, and it was guys being guys. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. No, those trips are always the best ones. So that's when you really – make that tight bond with those couple guys or at least everybody, but those couple guys, you really find out who you're friends with and you kind of get those inside jokes and whatnot. Exactly. And you have stuff to talk about the rest of the season, the the inside jokes that it, and like, it takes weekends like that to really get to know your teammates, right? You just show up to Mm -hmm. practice and play hockey. You don't get the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You got to spend time away from the rink with each other. It's not going to work. I agree. Okay. The only other things I got then, which I haven't asked about is poster picks. Why do you wear number 28? Um, Last year when I came to Hershey at the end of the season, I was number 12. And then uh, I got to camp and he had given my roommate that I lived with in Hershey number 12. And he gave me 28 and I walked up and he's like, are you all right with 28? I was like, yeah, I like, I don't really care what number I am. I've changed the numbers a few times. And yeah. And then Sonny Milano came in and he took number 12. So me and my roommate both got like kicked out of our numbers. <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't get the pick. I, I don't even know if I had the option to pick what I would pick. And that's always interesting for me. I, if it was me, just me is I would let the players pick their numbers. I would never, just give it to them because it can be very important to people. <laughs> yeah, no, some players it definitely is, but some people it's I'm like life or death, man. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Like they want to be traded if they can't get their number. <laughs> well, um, there was so I played my six games in Syracuse. Um, so then I had six pro games, and there was some draft pick on Syracuse the next year, and they gave me number 10 because of my six games played over him. Oh, was he mad? <laughs> he had like he had the chain and everything with a ten on it. <laughs> yeah, and then I played Dayton all year, and he never got to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
right? Sorry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not my fault. Yeah. Played six games. <laughs> uh, anyways, next poster pick. I Well, there's the one of the fastest skater. Great technique going around that net, eh? That's, yeah, that's that a great cool. photo. I do like that one. Yeah, that one will stick around for a while. Yeah, I also like, uh, I don't think it's on your poster, but the one of the game seven overtime goal where the guy yeah, is good. skating away and you are you got the passion in your eyes. You're ready. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, just screaming. So what were the festivities after? You have a parade. It looked like you had a packed bar in that one poster pick. You're holding a, a soda pop, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, it was lemonade that day. Um, yeah. yeah, no, we came back and uh, had a nice little celebration at our rink with, honestly, probably nine, ten thousand 10,000 fans. And um, captain and coach and general manager went up to talk and thanked us. And we signed some autographs. And then um, we had one of the guys that, like, does stuff for the rink like a cleaning service um he had us all over um for a nice celebration in his backyard he got a band and a bartenders and uh is that where the pool was was? yeah yeah yep and so yeah it was pretty cool to see and then after that uh we got a party bus um to a little bar i guess you would call it um and just had a little bit of a night there well I tell you, winning's fun, and you really get to know people after you win with them too, right? It's kind of like those weekends away. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, being able to celebrate something like that with them is definitely special. You get to see people's some true colors too, right? Yeah, (laughs) really. They finally let their hair down. Everybody's been so serious this whole time. (laughs) Uh huh. Yeah, it's finally nice to get that relief with everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Uh, I won't keep you up any longer, okay? Because I know you've been busy and having a time. You are an aggressive tongues out guy, huh? Oh yeah, big, big time. fold on big there, eh? Yeah, big time. So you get a new pair of skates and you got to work that tongue down there, eh? They don't come like that, do they? Yeah, no, not at all. As soon as I get a pair of skates, um, if I don't bake them right away, I immediately tape the tongues down. I was gonna say it's like a baseball glove, sit. eh? You're like working yeah. it in. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta break it down because the tongues are so hard nowadays. They're so Good how does that start? Shot, but... Why are you doing that? Why? Like the tongue's uh, there to support, like to protect you at the front of your leg. As funny as it is, when I was a kid and Alveskin came into the league with the tongue flop, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I started flopping right. and I stopped for a little bit and then I uh, tried to play without it. And I just feel like I couldn't skate. So I just kept it and kept it and roller hockey and ice hockey. Well, it makes sense. I mean, if you're doing well, that's when you flop, right? So yeah, <laughs> you may as well stick with the flops. It's like oh, when, yeah. And so I guess speaking of Ovechkin, um, because you're gonna play for the Capitals next year, um, he'd be on your team, and you know he's almost he's he's scored quite a few goals now in his career. Uh, so you would have met him at training camp too, probably. Yeah, yeah, I did. Just came up and introduced himself. Didn't really chat much with him, but it was still cool to be able to shake his hand and share the ice with him. Yeah, he's uh, well, I guess they'd call him a legend, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems like quite the organization they got there because their NHL team just won. Now their AHL team wins, and Hershey's won before, right? <laughs> it's not their first yeah, a rodeo. Few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, actually the last Hershey bear I had on was Matt Molson. That would have been a year ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. He was injured though. And he hasn't, he yeah. never played again. That's too bad. But mm. anywho, um, well, I don't have anything else other than I can see the passion. When I look at poster picks, I would, I'd see different stuff. I don't know. My brain's different, but when I see you score, I see this, the, the passion in your face, the, everything, that like you love it and you'd love doing well. But then I also saw a picture of you about to go by your bench after scoring a goal. And I could see how much your teammates liked you too. And that's what made me like my warmed my heart was that you could tell your teammates were as excited. You scored a goal as you were. And that's what I know I'm having a good dude on is when his teammates are celebrating the goals like he is, you know? (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's always nice to have your teammates like you, and especially if you're scoring goals, they might like you a little more. <laughs> yeah, it usually helps, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, thanks for coming on again. And, like, it's always fun getting to know Broncos and getting to know the new culture around there. But, like, then I get to know you a bit, and then I get to watch your career, and um, it makes hockey way more entertaining to me. And I get excited when you win, and I'm excited to you had a lot of fun and do you get a day with the cup now does that happen still uh yeah i don't know we just filled out a little little questionnaire they asked us some questions on like some playoff apparel and then uh asked us if we wanted a day with the cup so i don't know they said they'd get back to us by uh i think the end of the month or maybe like the first you, few days into you should July, make it but... a day to remember and get a day with the cup and plan a shindig yeah yeah no i definitely want to i just don't know if uh like uh, if I plan something, if a teammate has the cup that weekend or yeah, I don't know. They got to um, throw it all together and send it to us. Right. They'd have to give you your day and then you go from there type deal. Yeah. Mm. Well, exciting stuff, man. Like winning is so much fun. And I got to, oh, I was yeah. fortunate enough to do it a couple of times and it's the days afterwards are what the best part about it is. Right. Like yeah. you earn the days you get after and you do it together to get there and then you it makes you brothers for life and i I, i'm proud of you good season thank you (laughs) thank you yeah it was fun looking forward to building off that for sure yeah and uh you know i can't wait to have a shed guy in the nhl right (laughs) yeah hopefully that's the goal that's what we're working for yeah oh it's a shed guarantee folks and this has been (laughs) another episode of two ales and hockey tales with frankie and wally